Well, good morning, everybody. It is time that together we cast to the right side. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice in it. And I hope you will be rejoicing with me. In my devotional time today, I looked at Psalm 20. Psalm 20. And I'm going to read a couple of verses because these are in verses that were written by David, King David. This is over a couple of thousands of years ago, but they are still appropriate for today. They are God's word. They're God's word because, you see, you have to understand, the Bible was given by the inspiration of God. That means through the Holy Spirit. You have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And you can read over and over and over again where the Holy Spirit is the one who brings the message that God the Father wants to come forth. Now, Jesus relied upon the Holy Spirit to give him direction and guidance. Even though he was the Son of God, that communication between the Son and the Father had some direction that was given by the Holy Spirit. Let's listen to what David said in Psalm 20. I'm going to read verses 1 through 6, and then we're going to move into the New Testament where Jesus is going to be talking to us about our future and his plans. Now, let's see what David says. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. Have you been there? Have you had a time where it was troubling? May the Lord answer you. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. The God of Israel. Because you see, Jacob had his name changed to Israel. That's where the nation of Israel gets its name. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. In other words, God, he'll, he's going to remember what we have done to honor him. We don't do burnt sacrifices anymore. We don't need to. Jesus was the final sacrifice. Verse 4, may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all of your purpose. In other words, God has a desire to fulfill the things that you and I want and to see that we reach the levels of success in our life, our purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. In other words, this verse 5, we will rejoice in your salvation. Your salvation is personal, and we rejoice in it. When anybody comes to God the Father through the Son, through what Jesus did, as I've said over and over again, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. But when somebody does that, it even says that the angels in heaven rejoice. We rejoice in that when we find that a friend, a neighbor, a family member has come and received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And in verse 6, Now I know 
that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer from his holy heaven. Verse 6 is a prophetic word. If you've got your Bible and you look up Psalm 20, verse 6, it has that I can see, I know that the Lord, the Lord saves his anointed. God is going to save those who he has set apart. Now, who does he set apart? He sets apart you and me to receive him. But when we have received Jesus Christ, we receive an anointing, a covering, a covering. And he will be with us and he will save us. He will see us. You'll see yourself in various situations. You'd wonder, well, how did I get through that? It might be even a life or death situation. I think I've mentioned it before. There's been several times in my lifetime where I can't explain it, but I, I should have died and I didn't. I, I think one of the ones I can think about right off the top of my head was traveling up to Oklahoma and I had been tired all day and then I fell almost fell asleep, fully fully fell asleep at the wheel. The next thing I know I stopped and I looked and I was right on the edge of a cliff. I stopped at the right time. The Lord's the Lord did something to stop my vehicle and, and alert me and wake me up. That's what God wants to do for us. Now, Jesus talks about this as we move forward. And we're going to go now into the book of John, written by John. And... To set this up, this is getting near the time where Jesus was going to be arrested. He was going to go through all the different trials. He was then going to be crucified. Die, buried, resurrected. Now, but Jesus wanted his disciples to know, those close followers, what was going to take place? And he had prepared them because they remember he, he had them with him for almost three and a half years. Teaching them, going, seeing miracles take place. There were great things that happened together. But now he says this. This is John 17. And I'm going to start at verse 17. It says this, Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. To sanctify means to set apart. So Jesus is actually praying. This is a prayer, an intercessory prayer for the original disciples and for us. And what do you mean? For us? We weren't even there. Just hold on, folks. You'll find out. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Jesus is talking to his heavenly Father. You sent me down here, Dad. And I've also sent these disciples of mine into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself. He set himself apart. Jesus set himself apart. That they also may be sanctified by the truth. It is God's truth that sets us apart from the world. And we are in a time 
where if we don't have a clue or understand what God's truths are, we will be deceived. And let's put it this way. There are lots and lots of people who enjoy and have made it their position to deceive. I'll just put it this way. If you looked at last night's debate between former President Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris, there was a lot of deception going on because you had two commentators from ABC that would not share the truth or even ask questions that would bring out the truth, particularly in the realm of Kamala Harris and her past comments, her past decisions, and things that she has done in her lifetime, which there are records of, that don't add up to what she's saying today. I'll leave it right there. We need to understand and have an understanding of God's truth and to stay upon it. Now, this is what I want you to finally get a hold of. Jesus is saying in verse 20, John 17, verse 20, I do not pray for these alone. In other words, not just my disciples that are here with me now, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That's you and me, because through the ages, over the thousands of years now, over 2,000 years now, the words of God coming through the testimonies of one like David, King David, the prophetic words of all the different prophets, and now Jesus' own life, which we have written before us, is sharing. These things are for us. And it's gone forward, just reading through we have those that went out, the Apostle Paul, Peter. They went to different places in, their, in, the, in the Roman world, in other places of the world. I believe it was St. Thomas, the Doubting Thomas, went to India. I have seen where he was killed. I've seen where his body, or at least a portion of it, they... The Catholic Church has ways of taking what they call relics and spreading them around. But I was in one of those areas where I'll say a portion of St. Thomas's body was uh, buried. But they went and proclaimed the word, the truths of God around the world. And it's still going on today. It's still going on today. If you're listening to me, it's still going on today, right here in front of you, because I'm proclaiming what I know, what I believe to be the truth, because it is truth. It's the truth of God. And I want you to have that truth so it makes a difference in your life, so that you're not deceived, because you have a biblical hunger that will develop itself into a strong and immovable biblical world view. And finally, in verse 21, that they, that means you and me, that means everybody else in the world that's ever been born or ever will be born until Jesus comes again, that they may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, 
that they may be one in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. That's the promise. That was the prayer of Jesus for you and me. It was the prayer of Jesus for his disciples. And there's more to come as he sent the gift of the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that set Jesus apart, that sanctified him, that gave him direction. The same Holy Spirit. He sent for you and me that we would receive it, that we would receive that baptism, that covering of the Holy Spirit in our life. So let me just close with this today of saying, thank you, dear Jesus, that you cared enough for the world, that you cared enough for you that are listening and me and all others, that you would pray for us. Even at the time of your preparation to go through what you knew you were going to go through, through the process of the trials, through the crucifixion, through even knowing of your death, but also knowing that by the power and by the promises of God, you would be raised. You were. And you now sit at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And you're waiting. Oh, dear Lord, you're waiting for that day when you will hear it's time. It's time that you call your people up and you bring them to the place that we have been preparing for them here in heaven and to see the final days take place where eventually in that time frame that's outlined in the book of Revelation and other prophecies from the Old Testament where you will come and reign upon the earth a new heaven a new earth and we will be with you all will be with you whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And Lord, you've made it clear the only way that the name is written, that my name is written, that your name can be written if it's not already, is to receive you as Lord and Savior. That we have followed after you and had developed a relationship, a daily relationship with you. And we have a hunger to be with you and a desire to share with others the truth that has set us free. And I thank you for it now in Jesus' name.